Hi, welcome everyone. My name is Tihomir and I have Ricardo here with me. Hello guys. Yeah, in this talk we will uh, present to you guys the serverless workflow project. We will give an introduction to the project, look at some of its use cases, and then Ricardo is going to present us his really cool demo on how serverless workflow fits within a container orchestration environment uh, using Kubernetes and Knative. Next. All right, so serverless workflow is a cloud native foundation sandbox project. It is part of its serverless working group. It is open source and Apache 2.0 license. It is a community project and here you can find our information uh, for our GitHub repository website and community chat and meeting information. Next. All right, serverless workflow defines a declarative and domain specific workflow language. Declarative as it is not expressed in low level code, however, defines an abstraction language which can be defined in both JSON and YAML formats. Domain specific as it does target specifically the domain of orchestration of event driven and distributed services. And to give an example of that, here on the left hand side, we have two simple requirements written in a natural language. The first one being when a patient has, for example, a bladder infection, we want to notify. Uh, a urologist or a doctor dealing with that type of uh, issue. And the same thing with the second one, when a patient has a regular heartbeat, we want to notify a cardiologist uh, for that type of or issue. On the right hand side, we see that serverless workflow does not uh, express its, <coughs> its language in, in code or if else statements and things like that. Neither does it express it using terminology that does not fit the specific domain it targets. Uh, on the bottom right hand side, you can see that this type of uh, requirements we can translate directly into events and services. For, so, for example, a uh, patient having a bladder infection or irregular heartbeat, we can look at it and translate it into events that could be produced by, for example, in this uh, case, some different hospital systems. And notifying a doctor, in this case, uh, the particular doctor that deals with the uh, patient issue, can be translated into location of distributed services. All right, serverless workflow is based on standards. For event definition, we use the cloud event specification to define events, events that can be produced or consumed, and also define correlations between many different events that could be happening in your systems. We use the open API specification to define operations and services that need to be invoked during workflow execution. The serverless workflow specification then defines different uh, workflow patterns or control patterns, which then <clears throat> define execution order, error handling, and data management. And those are all based on widely known and used workflow patterns. Next. The overall project goals of the serverless workflow project are to define our language, which again can be expressed in both JSON and YAML format, and to focus on portability and vendor neutrality. So we want to be able to define a language which you can then execute on many different uh, runtime services. And those runtime services can be deployed in many different environments, including container and cloud platforms. So in order to start using events within your workflows, you have to first start defining them. Like we said, events can be either consumed or produced during workflow execution. With serverless workflow, you can see here that we have a direct one-to-one -one mapping between how events are actually expressed within the <clears throat> cloud events uh, specification format and how you're actually defining them within your workflows. So here you also can see that for event correlation, we also use the cloud events format, specifically its context attributes. All right, so how can you now, now that you define your events, how can you now interact with them? So as we said, events can either start workflow execution, they can continue workflow execution at some wait points, they can be either consumed or produced, and they can be used also to make logical decisions. On the right-hand side, we see a very simple end definition of the serverless workflow language, which says, okay, at this point, we're going to end the workflow execution, but before we end it, we're actually going to produce an event of type workflow completed event. 
Now this event then can be consumed by other different services in your systems, for example, other workloads or pretty much anything else that is listening to this type of event. <clears throat> Similar to events, we have want to define services and the operation on this distributed service that we want to invoke during uh, workflow execution. And as we said for this, uh, serverless worker project user utilizes this open API specification. On the left hand side here in the box, we see a simple <clears throat> open API definition, in this case written in YAML, and it shows one particular operation of this service that we want to invoke during workflow execution. On the right hand side, we see that there is again a one to one mapping. So, in order to define this particular um, operation and the service that you want to invoke during workflow execution, you basically have an operation parameter, which is a combination of the path or the URI to the open API definition of the service and the unique operation ID, which gives you unique one to one mapping. So, your runtime should exactly know what operation needs to be executed on the service whenever the workflow <coughs> requests for it. Next. Now that we have defined the services, we want to be able to evoke it. And we understand that there is many different types of services that you might want to invoke during workflow execution. With serverless workflow, you have the ability to define and invoke RESTful services that we see on the left-hand side in the example. Uh, but also you have the ability to define an invocation of services. They're not restful. They're not probably exposed at some endpoints, but how, uh, however are triggered by events. So that is also possible. The last part uh, of defining the, the workflow is actually the control flow logic. Here we want to define states and the order in which they're executed. With serverless workflows, uh, states are kind of like a black box that does some particular control flow uh, logic type. States can receive imp either data inputs or can they receive events. They perform their particular type of control flow logic that, that they're supposed to do. And then they produce data output or can produce events that can be consumed by other states um, within the control flow logic. Serverless workflow uh, sp specifies explicit control flow logic, which means that we want to clearly allow you to define what you want to build. A lot of times control flow logic can be very granular, granular in, which means that it becomes at some point ambiguous, ambiguous. And what we wanted to do is kind of try to eliminate that. Uh, it is often very hard to see during control flow, even visually, what parts kind of fit together and which parts in combination uh, define a control flow logic block that makes sense um, on a domain specific or a logical level. Uh, on the bottom, we see that each state within serverless workflow has a specific type and these types are somewhat clear. For example, we have an event type or a, which basically, okay, at this point, we're dealing, dealing with a control flow logic that has to do with events. The same thing, for example, a switch type. It is clear that this particular state is going to deal with logical decisions uh, based on either data input or the event payloads. So that is what we mean by explicit control logic. I'm not saying that one is better than the other. However, this is how we, the approach that we have taken within the serverless work language. Next. Uh, you can express many different types of control flow patterns with serverless workflow. You can define either sequences of execution, uh, you can do database looping, parallel execution. You can make decisions, like we said, based on either data or some sort of events. Um, you, you can deal with error handling, for example, issue retries or define how errors are handled during your workflow execution. In addition to that, uh, serverless workflow also allows you to deal with control flow that has to deal with human interactions, which is sometimes very important during execution of your workflows. And there's some other things and they're all specified within our specification documents. Next. Now let's take a look at the overall 
project components or what is all included within the serverless workflow project. So far, we have been talking about the serverless workflow language, which is described as a JSON schema. And this JSON schema really defines all the rules and, and the patterns that you can use when defining your language. Uh, in addition to that, the project also defines a set of language extensions. And these extensions do not control execution or the control flow logic or the, how what happens when the workflow is executed, but provides more information uh, about the, the workflow that you write in, that can be consumed by different runtime systems in order to overall improve the performance of your workflows in terms of you'll see cost and things like that. The, some of the language extensions that we provide are KPI or key performance indicators, extensions for tracing, simulations, and, and, and we're adding more as we go. Another part of the serverless workflow project is things like uh, software development kits. We have them currently in both uh, for both the Java and the Go languages. Um, uh, testing uh, TCK, or this is a compatibility kit for runtime implementations where they can compare uh, their implementation to, to the requirements of the serverless workflow specification. And in addition, we provide um, a set of plugins for widely used IDEs. <clears throat> so let's take a look at some of these, uh, or one of these uh, language extensions the serverless workflow provides. In this case, let's take a look at the KPI extension. And, and this particular language extension allows you to basically compare expected versus actual data of your uh, runtimes or information produced uh, during the runtime of your workflows. And it helps you really try to improve your workflows in terms of performance, cost, and its effectiveness. And on the right-hand side, you can see a small example uh, of the definition of this KPI uh, extension. Again, all the extensions, just like uh, the actual serverless workflow language, can be expressed both in JSON or YAML, so you have the choice to do that. But here basically allows you to, to define some expected metrics that have to deal with um, what do you expect to happen? How many times you think that some services should be invoked? Uh, what is the overall cost that you expect um, from, from running your workflows during a certain period of time? And then you can compare them uh, with the actual results and see if uh, those metrics are met or not. The next thing we want to take a look at is the Java SDK. And this particular SDK provides features like parsing of JSON or YAML that in runtime implementations can easily use and don't have to deal with that. It provides a fluent API, so it allows you to define uh, your workflow definitions just using programming language rather than dealing with, with the uh, JSON or YAML. Uh, it provides validation, so validation against uh, the serverless workflow specification itself. And it also provides diagram generation. So as you're defining and, 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 and your um, workflow models, it, you can go either from the JSON or YAML that is parsed or the uh, uh, workflow models defined using the language itself into uh, diagrams that you can then visualize. Um, one more thing we're gonna take a look at here is the um, serverless workflow Visual Studio Code plugin. And this is a, a plugin that's available on the Visual Studio Code marketplace. You can download it now and start using it. And its features are it provides code hints and code snippets for both JSON and YAML files. Uh, again, against the serverless workflow JSON schema, it provides validation. And at the same time, it also provides diagram generation. So as you're modeling your workflows, uh, in Visual Studio Code, you can easily preview uh, the diagram of your particular workflow and make sure that it visually also makes sense. Uh, all right, so that's it for me. Uh, so now we go to the cool part. Now Ricardo is gonna take over and do his cool demo. Yeah, let's, let's, let, let's see uh, what we have prepared for you guys today. So uh, the first thing is this, when we was, was we're thinking about the, the demo, we started thinking of how uh, we're supposed to fit uh, a particular use case with the serverless workflow uh, scenario and how that can help us. So uh, as developers, uh, we have this very uh, particular use case that I 
I, I wish to open a PR against a, a project, a GitHub project, and I wish to have my PR uh, being labeled exactly with what this is supposed to be labeled. And I wish to have you know my pull request be reviewed by someone. So it would be nice to have like maybe a bot that could label my pull request and maybe you know also add the correct reviewer uh, for my, for my pull request. So having this in mind. Uh, we draw uh, a, a proposed workflow for that. So um, imagine that uh, we could receive uh, an event change, uh, like a PR has been opened or changed, so we receive this event on our system. And uh, based on that event, we can analyze uh, the context of the pull request and understand what, what have been changed. So, uh, we can understand by based by um, the context, by the files that have been changed, and based on that, we can call the GitHub API to apply uh, the correct labels and also to add the required reviewers. And at the end of the workflow, we can uh, create and publish uh, a new event saying to the platform, hey, uh, the PR has been verified, and you can do whatever you want with this, this event. So having this uh, workflow in mind, we prepared uh, implementation with some technology around Kubernetes, Knative, the serverless workflow, and some, some runtime implementation of the serverless workflow. And the first thing is, once we receive a pull request, we'd like to, you know, to receive this event on a broker. So in this case, in, you know, on a Knative broker. Um, and then this broker will broadcast this event for anyone interested and in this case we have our serverless workflow runtime uh, running in this platform and we will listen to this event uh, of this pull request event and we're going to do everything uh, that we that we explained in the last slide like uh, analyzing the pull request what is going on with this pull request and one of the things is uh, to query the github api for the files that have been changed in this pr and also uh, apply the labels, uh, apply the reviewers. So for that, we need this GitHub uh, API functions uh, also deployed on our uh, platform, on our Kubernetes uh, platform um, that we are going to call like GitHub API functions. So uh, we have all those Knative server uh, functions deployed in there that we can consume using our workflow engine. And also is the the, the workflow is finished, we will uh, publish a new, uh, a new uh, ev event to the broker and the broker can also you know, broadcast this event for any interested uh, part uh, of the, this, this event. And in this case, the pull request verified event will be consumed by our notification service. So this notification service can be anything. It can uh, notify via email, via Slack, Telegram, or whatever other you know, uh, channels that you have out there in your company. So that's the, the main architecture, you know, the implementation of what we have. And then we basically have this broker implemented with Kennedy eventing system. So uh, Kennedy eventing will you know, delegate the, will broadcast the events around the, the Kubernetes namespace. We have this workflow runtime implemented with uh, our own runtime implementation of the service workflow. We have uh, this notification service also uh, aware of the of the serve of the events that um, are published by our work workflow runtime and we'll do you know the notification with that and uh, what kind of technology that we use like said uh, we have the serverless workflow implementation that we uh, that we are working on that it's called Cogito project we have Knative to serve the platform to be the infrastructure for us uh, for the, the serverless infrastructure um, uh, to handle uh, cloud events for us in the, in the Kubernetes namespace, to handle our functions in there. We also have uh, some the Java functions that you saw, the GitHub functions, they are all implemented in, in Java with Quarkus. Could be implemented in any language actually. So uh, use Java because we are more users to that. And uh, we have Camo, the Camo framework that is an integration framework for um, communicate with this like API to, you know, to make a, a, a nice notification to, to a given like channel. So um, I'm going to change my screen now to the, to, to the fun part like uh, Tihomi said. So uh, first of all, we're going to just watch the pods on our namespace. So for now, you, 
everything that we have here in this uh, in the application name space is the workflow engine running and uh, our cogito operator running there as well uh, this operator will is uh deployed the service and is controlling the service and how uh things uh, should be uh and the state of the, the the workflow should be so that's why uh there's a part of the operator in there and uh here in the bottom uh i'm in my project so i have this given uh you know cogito uh serverless workflow demo project in github so i'm going to uh start creating a new uh, branch uh, let's say kubecon and um, let's create a, a super fast file here and um, put some information in here in here like hello world hola mundo and whatever other things that you, that you might have and uh, you see that we have this file we're going to add and to commit that like new test file hello demo commit message all right so i'm going to push that to my project Okay, I finished pushing my service in there. So um, GitHub is nice and it's saying, oh, hey, you pushed a new uh, branch here. You like to open a pull, a pull request? Of course I want to open a pull request. So this is my new test file, which um, hello demo and let's say kubecon. Hello demo. Okay. Once I open a pull request, uh, you know, a new event will come um, to my to my Kubernetes namespace and Canada will handle that and we'll start uh, you know, uh, the operation of, of uh, the overall operation inside the namespace. So um, the broker the broker will take this event and we'll broadcast to, uh, to our Cogito workflow, to our runtime workflow engine. So let's see how it goes. After opening, uh, the pull request you can see that in, in the in the top of my screen that uh, we are receiving the event so we have this github event listener that is a gain native source uh, kind of uh, component you also see the github service that has all the functions that will that, that required to you know to interact with the the github uh, api and uh, once the pod is uh, is scaling to, to one because you no, know, we, we, we are using uh, a serverless platform, so we're supposed to, to do all the, this kind of stuff. You see that the, the pull request just added the, you know, the, the, the workflow, added to, to the correct label, and then the, the, the correct guy here you know, um, to review our PR. And as well, the notification service was you know, waking up to receive a notification in here. So you, you'll see that we received some notifications about the changes that we made in, in the PR. So uh, that's it for the demo. Let's go back to, to our presentation. Do you have any other things to say, Coach Homer? No, this was really cool. Thanks for doing this. That was great. Okay, let's continue then. Okay, so I guess that's it, right, Homer? We finished yeah, our presentation. So, yeah, and uh, I don't know. Do 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 wish to you know to share some more information about the serverless workflow uh, project or? No, we're good. I think here you can find uh, more information. Definitely our website, the serverlessworkflow.io. Um, again, like Ricardo and I, uh, we're community members of the project, and and we would like to also invite everybody that's watching to join. Uh, we have, uh, like we said, community biweekly meetings. Uh, there, you can uh, <laughs> just join them and see how it goes. Um, and here you can also find our GitHub repository with the specification project in there has all the details 
and the information and documentation, including examples, use cases, and things like that, that you can go ahead and check out and, and, and learn more about the project. Um, yeah, yeah, and, and everything about the demo you can see you know, in, in this we're here. Uh, you, you reach the, you know, all the serverless workflow uh, uh, files that we used uh, in this demo, the, how you can uh, create your own namespace on, on, on Kubernetes and use uh, all the scripts in that in there, the, the applications, the service, everything is in, in, this, uh, in this address and uh, you will be able to run this actual demo uh, in your laptop as well. I think that's it. Yeah, all right. Thanks everybody. Thank you, guys.